Hi again, everybody. Welcome to part two of the Algebraic Genius of Euler. My name is Dave Moraine. Hi. And uh, if you watch part one, um, which you really need to do to appreciate this, I began to give some background and develop this uh, incredible formula that Euler uh, discovered. They were looking at a series of these fractions, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4, 2 squared, plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 16. Perfect squares in the denominator, the squares of the positive integers. In algebra, this is called summation notation. And he derived that it's equal to pi squared over 6. You could try this on your calculator. Add several of these fractions and see how close you get to the decimal for pi squared over 6 on your calculator, but we have to move quickly. I left off with a special way to represent a trig function. Now the middle schoolers probably won't know much about sine x, although they see a key for it on their calculator. Uh, at that time, in the 1700s, Euler knew that sine x can be represented by this special polynomial. Really can't call it a polynomial because it never ends. So we call this an infinite series, just like this is an infinite series of fractions. And if you're wondering, uh, is that what motivated him? Perhaps. <clears throat> so we have this uh, infinite series. It has many, many other names. Power series, Maclaurin series, tail. It's calculus. And just accept for now that we can represent sine x this way. Uh, this was inspired, by the way, by... Um, Professor Jablow's comment on a recent uh, post that I published, and I'm very appreciative uh, to him. And, and you'll also find this in an excellent Wikipedia article on pi squared over 6. <clears throat> I may post a link on it later. Well, what do we know about sine x? They knew that sine x had a graph that was periodic, wave-like, repeating, cross the x-axis at 0, and all of the integer multiples of pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, and so on. <clears throat> and it was the genius of Euler <clears throat> that led him <clears throat> to take this fact and rewrite a sine x in a factored form using those x-intercepts from the graph. Uh, in fact, what he decided to do was divide both sides of this supposed equation by x, knowing that x cannot equal 0. He wanted the constant term to be 1, and if you're wondering if it's related to that, you'll see. <clears throat> Minus uh, x squared over uh, 3 factorial, which I'll write as 6. That means 3 times 2 times 1, 6. Plus uh, x to the 5th over 5 factorial. That's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, etc. And um, again, for x not equal to 0, he asked himself, I suppose, what are the uh, values of x which make this ratio equal to 0? And he knew it was... Um, all those integer multiples of pi, but I can't include 0 this time, so pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, and he wrote the uh, factors in that special form that you saw at the end of part 1. That's why I spent so much time developing this. 1 minus x over one of those zeros, or roots, or x-intercepts of the graph, 1 minus x over uh, negative pi, so I'll make it plus here, 1 minus x over 2 pi. So it's all these factors are of the form 1 minus x over an integer multiple of pi, etc. So look what he's doing now. He's getting the pi involved here. He's getting the integer multiples. <clears throat> They're not squares yet, but they will be in a moment. <clears throat> and then he... Um, was trying to match this product of factors, this infinite product of factors, if you will, with this infinite series. He knew they had the same zeros, 
the integer multiples of pi different from zero. He knew they had the same constant terms. That was the key. Um, and then he rewrote this because he loved to manipulate. That was part of his genius. So we got 1 minus x squared over pi squared. Take a look at that, folks. Notice the pi squared. Uh, 1 minus x squared over 4 pi squared. We're using basic algebra here, pi squared. Group the first two terms together. Group the next two terms together, a minus b times a plus b. I'll actually keep going. Um, 1 minus x over 3 pi times 1 plus x over 3 pi would be x squared over 9 pi squared. Are you catching on yet? Notice the 4 and the 9. Notice 1 fourth, 1 ninth. See how we got the squares into it? It's just amazing to me when I look at this. And then he said, well, this infinite product, when distributed, he didn't worry about justifying it rigorously. Uh, later on in his career, a few years later, in fact, he um, came up with a rigorous mathematical proof for pi squared over 6. But for now, he was treating it formally like algebraic symbols. He said, if you multiply this out, you'll get 1 times 1 times 1, matching up with that. And now what about the x squared terms? Well, let's think about it. Um, you'll have, I'm going to factor out a negative x squared. How would we get the x squared terms? We could take this term here and multiply it by all 1's, right? So that will give us 1 over pi squared. Remember, I took out a negative, the negative. So just have 1 over pi squared. How would we get another x squared term? Well, you get that from here. Uh, this should be x squared. So this would be uh, 1 over 4 pi squared. That'll be our next term. And then 1 over 9 pi squared. 1 over 16 pi squared, if you want to extend the pattern, etc. And then he matched up all these terms one with one, the constant terms. And then the coefficient of x squared or negative x squared, he matched it up right here. And when he matched it up, let's see what happened. So this is 1 minus x squared times all of this. Uh, 1 over pi squared plus 1 over 4 pi squared. Uh, I'm just repeating myself, aren't I? plus 1 over 9 pi squared, etc. And he said this coefficient has to be the same as this coefficient, which is negative 1 over 6. Do you see we're done? And again, he didn't worry about the fact that these series never ended. He said if this is equal to that, then we would have 1 sixth equal to 1 over pi squared plus 1 over 4 pi squared plus 1 over 9 pi squared etc. And so he multiplied both sides by pi squared and he got 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared. Well, I, I'll write it as 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth plus etc. And the pi squared comes up here and there you have the derivation for our uh, Euler formula for pi squared over 6. Review it. See how the squares came about. Why did he use the Maclaurin, Power, Taylor, whatever series you want to call this? How did the factorials play out? Well, we didn't really care about all the factorials. We only cared about the x squared term, and there was your 1 sixth. That's where the 6 came from in here. 3 times 2 times 1. Why is it pi squared? Well, we saw how the pi squared resulted when we multiplied pairs of factors together, like x minus pi times x plus pi. Or we did it in that special polynomial form with 1 minus. And then we matched up the coefficients because we have two polynomials, even though they're of infinite degree, that have the same zeros or x-intercepts of the graph and the same constant terms and I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. There's so much more we can say. Uh, I really invite you to explore more with sine x, and we'll come back to Euler's genius later. Thank you very much.